Fiona, thank you so much for agreeing to be the next victim in this uh, <laughs> series of intrusive and very personal interviews about what do you do? Uh, and we're here at Air Studios uh, and we're in front of your rather elaborate office, really. Yeah. Can you tell me in here when you're, say, recording an orchestra, before we get into all that technical gubbins, who else is in here with you when that is happening? The composer. Both most yeah. importantly, um, and often a composer's uh, assistant or programmer. Um, on the engineering staff, there's a Pro Tools operator and another assistant whose job it is to kind of look after the, the floor. Yeah, um, right. And then, if, are we talking about film scores or? Yeah, let's say, yeah, and a film score, yeah. Director usually, maybe producers, um, a music supervisor. Crikey. Okay, so sort of setting the scene. They're all with you. <laughs> it's in, quite a busy in here. control room. Usually. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Here at Air Lindhurst, we have a famously yeah. uh, excellent acoustic, um, which one imagines. You know, you always want as part of the recording. Is that always the case, though? How is the room used, and yeah. can you vary that within the recording? We're definitely very blessed in this room that it's it's hard to make a bad recording. <laughs> it takes more rest of it. challenge. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Give, give me a um, go. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, it, it is um, changed and, and, and used in different ways. We've, we've got, obviously, the flexibility of the roof, which, which makes the biggest difference, that so we, can, we can raise it up and, and bring okay. it right yeah. down. So, yeah. uh, again, for the sort of more lush stuff or for a big sort of classical sounding choir or something, you might raise the roof up, which just, you know, increases the reverb time and... So the whole thing breathes. Yeah. yeah, yeah or okay. we, and the, most of that sort of reverberant sound comes from the galleries. Um, so we put out these Melotech sheets that are just absorbent mattresses, basically, right. to try and deaden the room down. And then for something more actiony, we'd bring the roof right down. Um, and I was doing a, a session last week that had to have, we were doing choir, but it wasn't um, a big kind of classical choir. It needed to be a closer, more backing vocal kind of, vibe and right. we put out a load of carpet brought the roof right down screened it off so we kind of made a room within the room that so it's, it's actually i mean it's hard to, when you're looking at it you don't imagine it's no. as flexible as that so it really can be shut down to that much down. more intimate space I mean, it sounds almost like f film particularly can be kind of almost genre divided into the kind of recordings you make you know Ac you've mentioned action a couple of times yeah. already. That <laughs> does that present a certain kind of situation for you, let's say an action movie? I guess, yeah. But if you hear the words action, you think, okay, so we need more control, basically, right, um, right. over everything. So definitely dead in the room if you can. You, you obviously still want to use that amazing acoustic, but yeah, it you can't also be want too at the other kind end of sloppy, the sound, you know. Because right, yeah, yeah. And, and again, on that idea of control, do you, the, in terms of the number of mics and how many, how much separation you want, yeah. are you always aiming for the maximum, or are there sometimes where you'll you'll go for a much more sort of blended sound with fewer mics, or is it always a case of you just need ultimate control later? So let's separate this out as much as possible. Uh, that's another. It kind of, yeah, it depends on the film and it depends on the dub and, and the requests of the director and the, the dubbing mixer a lot of the time. Um, yeah. For big action films like that, say, we'd, we'd do a lot of separation. We'd do separate parts of like short strings versus long strings, uh, woodwinds, brass, percussion, everything would be typically recorded separately. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which is so that in the mix you've got control because you might want to use a different effect on short string pass versus long string pass, for example. Sure, but also, sure. in the end, at the dub, the director can say, oh, turn the horns down, or <laughs> what, whatever it is that's bugging him, or if he wants to lose something or change something, then the music editor has that control. Um, and it's quite rare these days. It does happen, and I actually worked on a film with Howard Shaw recently where he did the whole orchestra together in the room, but it's rare that the film team let, let you do that, I would say. Helping you out there, presumably, is... a uh your army of assistants. <laughs> you came, did you come up through that route yeah, of being absolutely. an assistant? Yeah. And what's that entail? Well, you start out as a runner, um, which I guess, as in most studios, involves <laughs> making a lot, a lot of tea. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, 
it's well it's particularly great here I think because you, you get to do a lot quite quickly um, you're, you're obviously helping with the setups and then when the recording is going if, if anything goes wrong you're the one out on the floor changing mics um, yeah. helping the musicians if they need different headphones or more space or you know you're kind of the liaison with without yeah. there really um, and you get to get to know everyone in the room yeah yeah. Which is what I thought was the best part of the job, you know, because because you're doing the tea and coffee run. Yeah. You you immediately the introduce way to yourself. Their yeah, <laughs> exactly. You're talking to them and it starts yeah. off just like what do you want? But then you end up having, you know, getting to talk to all these different people in yeah. in different roles and, and getting to know them a bit, which is you know Yeah, and getting to know the room and also oh, yeah. I suppose that's where you're learning about all these yes. placements and mics exactly. and different qualities. You're you're having to help set up and uh, working with so many different engineers and assistants as well, and, and learning how everyone does things differently. <laughs> yeah, I mean, are there big stylistic differences? I mean, I think mm. perhaps even for this session, you, is this some, a session or that someone else started? Or, I mean, it can be that you will inherit a setup yeah. from someone else. Yeah, exactly. It? So, well, for example, sampling today, this is something that Jake Jackson does normally, and, and he's on holiday, so I was just covering for him. Um, right. So, I was setting up from a recall of, of what he has done on, on all and the And a recall, room. just like for, for my basic mind, so a recall is that the setup of this room? The and setup that room. of this room. So, as soon as we've done it once, basically, we, yeah. we record exactly the position of each mic, well, what each mic is, yeah. exactly where it was, um, how high it was. We take lots of pictures, um, we write, we make desk recalls, uh, we have Pro Tools sessions, obviously, that we reopen, yeah. patch bay recalls, so that everything can be brought back to exactly as it was. As yeah. It was. yeah. Your um, assistants, so they're sort of your emissaries out there, they are clearly very important to you in terms of not only the te technical aspect of the session, but they're helping set the mood out there uh, as well in the way oh, they're absolutely. dealing with. Absolutely. Especially when, um, when, if, when and if there are technical problems, which inevitably at some point yeah. they will be, it's, it's so important to have a good team and and you know even you know the runner might not be able to do anything technically but they're keeping everyone in good spirits so yeah while there's all frantic yeah while everyone else <laughs> pulling out cables while the techs the actually come in to try and rescue us and we're all going ah yeah. <laughs> in the heat of battle which um, is all silent to them out there yeah, yeah. <laughs> but out there yeah you get you get to know all the musicians as well which yeah having started out there uh now that i'm in this chair they're they're all incredibly supportive and excited for me and you but, know, yeah great. and it, it makes this job a lot easier because you're like oh the, there's my mates yeah, <laughs> the, I know there's 70 of them <laughs> but they are my mates and like they're grinning at me through the glass and it's all right actually uh, yeah <laughs> and is that I mean is that is that the way it's happened for most people here at Air? you know they've come up through that system so they know the ropes they know the people yeah and yeah you're not just suddenly some grand person arriving at the Someone desk going, yeah. in like, Hello. right, I'm in charge now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You've never met me. But and historically, you know, as an assistant, I've always tried to look after them. Well, to everyone really, I suppose that's maybe a bit of my personality. <laughs> that's um, good. <laughs> you know, but if, if they come and say, oh, we just don't have enough space or, you know, these headphones, they're really uncomfortable or whatever yeah. it may be, you know, uh, we know that they will play better if we if we yeah, help them and, and try and make them feel yeah. better yeah so so you yeah you've definitely got a, a, a split mind you've got a very there's the technical stuff which we're about to sort of creep into now yeah. but also that that looking after the diplomacy of it of it all and, and clearly there's also a lot of that going on in here because if you're sat with the director and the composer often yeah um orchestrators orchestrators <laughs> yeah are you ultimately uh, do you have to step in as a referee if uh, if there is <laughs> if there's yeah, a discrepancy in here as to how something should be done or should sound or you know where do the lines of authority and do yeah. they get confused or again, again that's different on every session sometimes you should just be uh, I guess like a calming presence who's just getting on with it and just kind yeah. of driving it but not saying much and and sometimes you've got more leeway to, to give musical suggestions or I suppose you have to read each exactly. each sort of 
uh, social setup yeah, you yeah, know yeah. As, it, as it comes some because i guess sometimes people actually genuinely will really be in need of yeah. of your input on something and other times time, they're like they're no, really no, not we yeah really want, thanks. <laughs> yeah yeah so you have to read that as, as well as everything else that's going on <laughs> so getting getting we're slowly coming up to the glass and we're, we're going to get in the room now in terms of what your your setup here for the people to hear you know in terms of what's going on in the hall mm -hmm. um are you aiming at you know how, how do you go about that how are you grouping stuff how do you set up the mix for in here that's being listened to by the by your punters if you see what i mean <laughs> i suppose you're you're starting with the room mics right if you, if if you mean that sort of thing yeah yeah, yeah. The, just the, yeah how i mean this, this bafflingly huge desk yeah, yeah. how talk, if you walk <laughs> us just through you know the the how you set up in here what's been put out there you know. um yeah well even if you'll have a group of room mics uh maybe mid mics and spots uh in here and and the first thing that that anyone seems to do you fade up the room mics because they're, they're your basic sound, yeah. and then anything else is sort of sweet, sweetening it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, there are um, there. yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you start by listening to that, and then I suppose you're trying to pick out, okay, what do I, what do I need more of? What, uh, have I got enough woodwinds? Yeah, yeah. Brass. Again, it's depending on the music. Um, you would start by listening through to things, checking, obviously, that things are sounding as you want them to. Yeah. So but you don't get a lot of time for for sound checking so it's it's normally like room mics up right okay now what, now what yeah. else <laughs> so isn't it technically known as kick bollocks ground <laughs> so in educated that, in uh, educated kick bollocks, kick bollocks <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly oh that's good it's in a refinement on, on the normal level <laughs> is it possible to talk about what's so attractive about this place and the sound of this room and the setups here and what it is that attracts people to it <laughs> without being too I'm obviously biased. self promotional <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah it's all me it's <laughs> yeah. No, I think it is um, that we're a real family. Uh, yeah. I think, I hope that that comes across, uh, you know, assisting and and even, you know, uh, the workshop and the bookings and the canteen and everyone. People here stay here for a long time. Um, there are several members of staff that have been here since Air Oxford Street. So right. we, we really are a family and, you know, on the assistance engineering team, we all look out for each other and do you think stuck that in becomes and becomes an air sound i mean can you even dis is there any way of describing what the air sound is if you think of it in contrast to other big studios for instance i guess the thing the amazing thing about air is that it gives you a lot of bang for your buck right. <laughs> i mean <laughs> it's, it's amazing if you have like a 40 piece in there it just sounds incredible and huge and or, or a solo violin or you know whatever you put in the hall just it brings steroids. this depth yeah exactly um it, ha it has this amazing warmth and depth and, and breadth to it um but you know abbey rose has this amazing kind of top end it, yeah. it's really different and it's a sort of different detail i don't know how to describe it and i and i obviously haven't recorded there as much um yeah. but listening to mixes from from both yeah, I, yeah. I can see why people would go okay i'm going to do this uh, air and i'm going to do this yeah. that you know for, for different yeah. types of scores again but um what makes our clients come here they obviously love the sound of the hall and yeah. how huge it makes things and and then i think the the vibe <laughs> yeah 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 or the vibe of the place and the people yeah yeah, yeah. are there places though that you would sort of, that you sort of look at and could be anywhere in the world either because of the geography or the and the acoustics and the architecture of the place or because of some other technical reason that you just love to get in there and try and record <laughs> you know I'd love to try British Grove. <laughs> British Grove. Yeah. Now you have to fill me in. I don't know. Oh. I don't know where that is or what it is. Uh, Mark Knopfler's studio. Ah, oh, right. Yeah. Um, okay. I I think now they do have more commercial sessions there, but it's definitely a kind of they don't necessarily have to do. So, you know, and, and they've got the the best of the best. Every, you know, it's like imagine your dream studio. <laughs> I'll make that a reality. Right. And like, oh, you want that compressor? Sure. You know, it's There's like one that. Over there. Yeah. Yeah. I'll get 10. Um, I, I, I don't know, but it, it yeah. seems like, you know, every sort of dream piece of kit, if you're a Valvey geek or an outboard geek, yeah. you know, yeah. they've got it three, yeah, three different desks and yeah, I'd like to, I'd like to go and play <laughs> at, at British Grove. 
<laughs> Memo to but Mark that's Knopfler. just this week. I mean, <laughs> yeah, this week could be anyway. How quickly can you kind of do in a, you know kind of handbrake turn if a composer's in here and is faced with a sound that just doesn't seem to be really either what they imagined or or, or is not it is not you know packing the right kind of punch for them or right. yeah I mean can you get quickly out there and reset in terms of mic spacings and positions if yeah again that yeah because because of having two assistants and, and the engineer we we yeah it's been known yeah. Was going, yeah that's great but what about if we yeah. did x and you're like okay okay i'll sure. just organize that hang on a minute <laughs> and you run around and the musicians get a good laugh Again, yeah, that's, when, that's when you become good mates because they're just like, what are you doing? <laughs> just trying to Hang on a minute. A yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, of course, because they're the boss. So if they decide that it's, you know, another 10 minutes of recording yeah. time well spent, obviously you have to get it right. So yeah, yeah, yeah it doesn't sure. take that long to change certain things. I guess the, the challenge is interpreting what they actually want as quickly as possible yeah again back <laughs> and making to that the right changes yeah 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 now you for you were an assistant here but also we touched on this before we started recording how it's getting much more commonplace to do for for people to do all kinds of different jobs I and mean, i know you've done some music editing as well yeah um, assisting. Assist, sorry assisting <laughs> assisting yeah. i can't say <laughs> yeah. is that i mean it, th these boundaries between jobs do you feel that they are getting it particularly in a place like this, but the perhaps welcomes it. Do you think they are loosening a bit? Yeah, it definitely feels that way. Having, um, I guess, here, the assistants, uh, you know, tape off, being a, an assistant has changed as a job so much over the last 20 years. It's not just pressing record now, it's uh, having to be incredibly organised, doing edits on the fly as you're recording, yeah, uh, yeah. making all the versions. It is, yeah, that's big and stressful job um, and actually here you can quite often go ah, da -da. <laughs> and then <laughs> and that uh, and, and assisting you're like okay yeah kind of running <laughs> the whole time yeah, and yeah. Uh, as but because of that you have the skills to to be a music editor I guess um, or certainly a music editor friend was telling me the other day <laughs> yeah right I mean you, you could totally do this job um, and, and they kind of do recording and producing and a bit of engineering and a bit of composing, you know. Yeah, yeah. Now music editors are going into composing because obviously they do a lot of writing as part of making temps or... Yeah, um, it seems like and, well, and you filling know, in. all the jobs are Exactly, so they sort of bleed, out. yeah. Yeah, which obviously, you know, there's a lot of high-end stuff happening here, and obvi but obviously in more budget things, yeah, a composer will be sort of dabbling often with all sorts of bits and pieces, bits of mastering, bits of this, yeah. that and the other, you know, depending on... I mean, you know, we've talked a lot about orchestral instruments, but of course, you... It's quite possible you'd have all kinds of extravagant combinations of electronic and uh, yeah. acoustic instruments, which presumably pre present a kind of particular challenge. I mean, mixing amplified and traditionally sort of, say, rock or pop instruments with... Do, do, you know, can you do it at the same time in here? You know, how, are there particular challenges to combining those? Well, we're definitely lucky in this space in that you physically can do it um, yeah, because yeah. we've got all the booths um, and next door as well with the with the wall and and guitar amp booths and yeah, you can sure. get the separation because that's the the big challenge. A drum kit in there is a <laughs> yeah, <it's not laughs> an amazing noise, but <laughs> soup drum soup. Yeah, exactly. A bit. Um, Bit of a mess, maybe, depending yeah. on how you, you what you're aiming for. But um, is that what you wanted? She says, <laughs> yeah, leaning exactly. towards the composer. If you if you wanted it, yeah. And we've done a session in here with many drum kits, and it sounds incredible. Yeah. But it sounds more like a sort of lineup of um, percussion players playing toms really right. loudly, rather than a you know intricate jazz kit. So. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Was it yeah. Miles Davis says at the end of one album, <laughs> not even the devil would want to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> And so before you were, um, you know, assisting, uh, what got you into this? Did you did you study audio engineering? Did you? Yeah. Well, when I was a kid, I uh, my keyboard teacher had a studio in his garage, and he's a big sort of modular synth guy. 
So he right. had this right. ridiculous uh, Moog wall of synths. Yeah. And uh, I can't remember, I think I had to go to his house for a lesson once and I was just like, what? <laughs> you know, what is that? why are we doing this? I want to do that. <laughs> is that um, a kidney dialysis machine or what? <laughs> exactly. You know? And so he was just like, oh, you know, it's just blah. And I was just like, no, tell me more. It's not blah. Yeah. Uh, so he sort of started getting me into wow, getting so me you, into recording you when I was on a yeah. Moog modular in a garage. That's <laughs> <Yeah>. fantastic. <laughs> and then he was the the one that you know because I was so interested in that side of it and um, let my piano playing slide slightly. Um, okay. I've never been one for gone. sort of performance and being in front of people. Oh, I, apart, I love apart from playing. just a, a huge orchestra <laughs> and, uh, and loads of famous composers. I can't imagine what <laughs> like doing their job is every day I'm in awe. Um, <laughs> but but it's funny, isn't it? Because I, I, I look at your job and I go, God, that must be terrifying. <laughs> you know, and I suppose, you know, it's... It, like maybe you get used to it, whatever you're doing. You get you're used doing. to whatever performance yeah. you're doing, I suppose, yeah. But because of that, he was like, well, if you don't want to, you know, if you're really into music, but you don't want to be uh, a player, a musician yeah. as such, then... Uh, what about recording? And yeah. have you noticed that on the Air and Abbey Road website, everyone did this course, the Tom Meister course? Ah, the Tom Meister so word. It, yeah, yes, I'm course, afraid yes. it was him going, you should do that. So I was like, oh God, I've got to do maths and physics. Um, yeah, I think yeah, the maths <laughs> did for me. That was, um, uh, so that, that's how I got in, basically. Got fantastic. onto the Tom Meister, amazingly. And, yeah. <laughs> and then got my placement here. Um, would you still, would you say like for people looking, as they, de as they will desperately after seeing this video to follow in your steps, do you, would you say that that route is still, still an effective one or are there have other ways opened up? Oh, you know? there, of course there are other ways. I personally didn't know anyone in the industry. So yeah, yeah. for me, I couldn't see another way in apart from just the year, the year in the industry was the big, yeah big attraction for me. But um, there yeah. are other people here who've done various different uh, recording courses at Lippa or at the ACM or yeah. um, one guy did music and physics at the Academy. Uh, is Lippa the Liverpool yes. place, right? Yeah. And then the other one? The ACM is, is in one. Guildford and it's kind of, uh, I think it's more performance and music business and production based generally. But now I think they're doing a, a recording course as well. and. Yeah. Uh, I guess anywhere that has teachers that work in the industry, a, a, yeah. a couple of our assistants have, have got in, as it were, because they were really shining on, on their course. And, and yeah. one of their teachers then did a session here and, and got them to come, you know, and yeah, help yeah. out. Yeah. And then we were like, oh, who's he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he seems good. We'll have him. Yeah. And, right. and we, we poached them. So uh, my way was, was lucky, but you know, there are other ways. And then, of course, there's the just making tea for a com working with a composer or transfer. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I suppose it's just getting to know someone who's already doing it, Finding essentially. Finding I suppose, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been sort of rattling through in my head about um, about the sheer cost of this whole thing. I'm thinking mm -hmm. of an orchestra out there with uh, incredibly valuable instruments and all of this and the hour by hour rate for highly skilled professionals. Um, does someone sit you down when you're a, you know, an assistant here and give you a bit of a pep talk about not dropping mics on uh, very expensive <laughs> cellos? I think um, when you first out, when you first start out, you, you're definitely aware that this microphone I'm holding is 15 grand and that cello is a million. But as you say, <laughs> did I know that? I guess um, it was impressed upon me on my first few sessions that, uh, you know, you take care, you respect uh, yeah, yeah. the gear and, and the, the instruments particularly are worth a fortune. And, and, and people surprisingly go on a break and leave it like their cello just sort of lying on a chair it's and you're like dancing around it. Yeah. They're um, so used to kind of yeah. being aware of its space, aren't they? Yeah. And then you, because it must be, I mean, I would be quite terrified to kind of wander in there with, with a 15 grand mic and uh, have to get through the sea. And exactly. And uh, but yeah, going back to what you we were saying earlier about when there's a technical problem and you have to literally walk into yeah. them and you're just like, really sorry, yeah. really sorry, please. You know, uh, then then it's their responsibility, I suppose, to get everything out of the way. But um, 
yeah, you de definitely try to be careful and, and someone does tell you that that the, the horror story, I guess there's always that horror story. Yeah, the, come on, there must the, be a cautionary tale that everyone gets The assistant that came told. before you and decided to run in the hall and knocked over a Stradivarius cello and uh, <laughs> the, the financial uh, repercussions. That, yes, yeah. exactly, and, and the studio having to pay out a lot of money. Uh, and, and But even then, that sort of instrument, you break it. It's not like money can fix it. Unfortunately, yeah. you know, it, it'll have lost something. Um, and so from then on, you're like, OK, yeah, sure. Um, but but also when when something goes wrong, I, I remember when I was first a runner and the engineer telling me, I, I guess there were, would have been 70 or 80 players out there and something had gone wrong. And uh, I was walking calmly, trying not to trip over cellos. And he said to me, it's 100 pounds a minute fee, so you might want to step on it. Um, <laughs> 100 pounds a minute. So definitely urgency, you know. I love this idea that you, you know, you, that you weren't that comfortable with, say, standing up and playing an instrument on your own. But then this business of sitting in a place that's spending 100 pounds a minute, you're quite cool about that. <laughs> well, the, being a runner used to be terrifying because you yeah. were just like, ah, the money. And yeah. uh, just see it I, seeping coming yeah. out of people's pockets. And you're desperately trying to change the mic, sort of shaking because you're out in front of everyone. That, that used to really scare me until I got to know people. I suppose that's yeah. what it always comes Again, down to, is the people. Yeah, exactly. As soon as they'd been nice to me, I was just like, oh, okay, actually, they're yeah. everyone, yeah, they're just like, oh, great, I'll read my paper for a second, you yeah, know. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the it's clients an incredible are difference. obviously concerned yeah, and I'm you have to be as quick as you can, but also efficient and not careless. Yeah. Uh, and Can and you see you the whites of a composer's eye? Can you tell when someone's in here who's this is a real new thing for them of kind of burning through that level of money to have their score recorded i mean can yeah. can you see the nerves do you do you sometimes have to kind of settle people a bit yes there's definitely sometimes nerves but i don't think there's ever been a time where we haven't got it done yeah. as in we've yeah. got through everything they wanted right and uh i guess it's just yeah making them feel calm that they can trust us that we've got this under control this is just something that happens yeah. but we know what we're doing and it'll be fine in a sec I mean, I and we'll just, catch up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's fine. We'll, we'll do it. I know we've got 72 pages yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I can imagine, you know, composers coming in here and being either, you know, sort of super excited, you know, getting their hands on this amazing mm -hmm. toy or, or or kind of just quite daunted, really, by, by it, you know. Yeah, a, a mixture of both, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever had to, no, mentioning their names, do you ever had to really sort of dig someone out of that? sort of slightly frozen state and just reassure them, you know, it's okay, we're gonna... I think normally um, it's quite nice because people can be really honest. And I've seen people that aren't used to, you know, dealing with these forces, say they've got yeah. a gig and, and they've been given a huge budget and they've got to write this music for yeah. this amazing orchestra and they don't normally get that, say, um, you know, they, they're normally quite honest about it, just yeah. say, my okay, first so time. The, yeah, <laughs> the last thing I did in a studio was a string quartet, so yeah, this is yeah. exciting. Just uh, in, I'm um, a virgin, I'm a virgin, <laughs> I've never done it. Yeah, but <laughs> it's again, then the orchestra are just like, great, this is amazing, let's do it. So yeah, I think, lovely. yeah, that, that's so the, the, there's a generosity towards that, mm, definitely, that sort of fresh face, if you like. Yeah, and you're recording here in London with arguably the best musicians in the world, but but whenever someone comes here rather than goes anywhere else. I mean yeah. to London and, and and uses them. Of course, they're going to be excited and happy and yeah, yeah. and supportive of of that project. So someone used a great expression to me the other day talking about a film composer, and uh, he said, "Oh yeah, you know, he's he's really spent his time in the garage, sort of meaning you know, he's sort of done his time." And I'm I'm just wondering <laughs> here, you know, basically, well, it's interesting because you you mentioned the garage earlier, you know, yeah. with your modular <laughs> synth. Um, yeah. I'm just wondering about the time scale of things here. You know, how long you're an assistant for and. Um, what that route normally takes. It it uh, it depends. But <laughs> Everything depends. I know. It? Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> that's a cop out, isn't yeah. it? <laughs> it's got to I be think... just simple facts. Yeah. Yes or no. <laughs> <laughs> if you're coming in as I did, as a runner, um, it's I've now been here for nine years, which is scary and doesn't feel like it. No. <laughs> and, and now I'm sorry, just starting to engineer. I mean, I'm still yeah. assisting on stuff. Um, but getting more and more engineering gigs and trying to build it up and so I think generally most people feel ready to jump 
up to yeah. freelance engineering, I should say, not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, to the after, garage. After about, after about 10 years. Because, oh, okay, yeah. because of the nature of the work that we're doing. Um, because here yeah. there is such a financial <laughs> pressure. Um, yeah, it's a lot of responsibility. It's a lot me, of responsibility, yeah. exactly. And, and gaining people's trust to, to be sitting here and, and running their session when they're spending that much money just yeah. takes a lot of time and, and also a lot of experience you know yeah. you have to learn from being being in that chair yeah, yeah. and you god it's, a, it, it's an incredible honor to be here because you get to work with all the best engineers in the world and, and yeah. see what they do and, and learn from them but also see how to run a session and n not that I could be I don't think a different personality but you know, yeah. you start to learn how to, as I said earlier, how to read yeah. a room, say, and, and yeah, when to shut up. Yeah, the cast of characters that you're yeah. looking after, yeah. Exactly, and, and that all comes from being here yeah. for some time, I think. <laughs> and, you know, places have idiosyncrasies, don't they, like technically, mm. as well as anything. I mean, how difficult would it be for you to just be sort of teleported to a, another studio, and how long would it take you to kind of get used to it? In that sense well probably because I've been here not that long that's right. that that's <laughs> we we get such an amazing training in so yeah. many areas and I think that the film school of pro toursing uh, yeah. prepares you for anything oh, that's um, interesting right yeah that whereas covers if I'd more come bases. from a yeah come from a more rock and roll background it would be extremely hard to step in here I think um, but and yeah. also because we've got a Neve desk and the vintage Neve next door and an SSL upstairs and a digital Neve, you know, yeah. we've we've learnt a lot about different equipment because yeah, we're blessed yeah. to have a lot of different gear. So that makes it easier when you walk into a new place. You're like, oh, that's sort of like my desk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so in terms of you know your job and you being stretched technically, mm. is there anything better than? standing or sitting in here mm -hmm. with a full orchestra and, and you know maybe a couple of people in the booze playing guitars whatever doing a film score I mean does it get better than that in your work it's pretty exciting <laughs> 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 no that um, that's definitely one of the one of the two top things I love orchestra recording and, and the other one for me is uh, like an album I was working on recently working with a band who want to play live and uh, do that old school of thing. Record of, of, as live. Yeah, yeah. record as live yeah. and sort of mix to tape, although we're not on tape anymore, but EQ compress everything to tape. So, so that yeah, challenge, as tape. you yeah, say, yeah. of like, yeah. I've got to make this sound great right now because this is it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that's obviously the same in, in an orchestral score because you, you don't get too many chances, as you said. Yeah. You don't have time to, to yeah, mess around with your setup and, that, yeah. and change lots of things yeah. and you have to make kind of educated decision before you start and that, yeah that is what I really like. <laughs> what we're now calling the educated kick bollocks yes, scramble. Yes exactly. <laughs> um, now I understand what you do or at least some of it. Thank you Fiona, it's been great talking <laughs> to you. Cheers. Thank you.